Everybody get up. Why do we make? We make to represent the world, to imitate our gods, our makers. But we also make to respond, to participate. The digital has brought with it a maker culture, one where making is central to be. One where being is increasingly mediated be. To be is to be mediated, to be in the process of becoming, to become digital something else's, someone else's. We make to exist, to be more than human fibers, we make to become human fiber optics, topics, tropics, tropes. We are the makers of mediated expression. We are the makers of mediated knowledge. Ours is an epistemic condition wrapped in a techno-ontological blink. We ask questions about the nature, the future, the rhetoric, the aesthetic of digital making, digital scholarship, digital academia. We reinscribe compositional histories. We track and trace algorithmic futures. But the questions, the histories, the moments yet to come point to something else, something other. An otherness that resides at the core of our maker drive. An otherness that parallels the ridiculousness of our archive drive. In our current moment, we make not to critique, but to respond to the primary call of validating our own existence. To show we have happened, occurred, been witnessed by our creations. We academics, perhaps acacritics, have privileged a certain type of response for as long as cultural practical memory will allow. The response of critique, the life source of the critic, the harbinger of analytic doom. But the critic is a leech, living off the markings and makings and monstrosities of others. Aca scavengers, hunting for weakness, inconsistency, openings that can be infected, infested, and invalidated. And doing so proudly under the banner of the knowledge regime but also overtly bearing the mark of negation. But digital culture, a different moment, a different engagement, privileges another kind of action, a maker's mark, a turn toward a generative economy, a gift economy. To be in this digital moment is to participate, to be part of participatory culture. To participate is to contribute, to contribute is to produce, to make, to meme, to mime, to mirror, but in rhetorical ways. We are not imitations, nor are we targeting the uncanny. We are not simulations, nor are we targeting nostalgia. That is, multimedia scholars are not merely textual scholars gone wrong or gone wild. We are not merely trying to find ways to breathe new life into text. We are not merely anything. We pursue a different agenda, hold different expectations, value and evaluate in different degrees. What matters is not the validity of one's logic, the soundness of one's argument, nor the fervor of one's criticism, but in an Almerian way, the openness of one's subjectivity, the ekphrasis of one's moment, and the power of offering a genuine, mediated experience. An experience tied to knowledge, a knowledge and knowing tied to culture, but also inseparable from aesthetics, aesthetics that give meaning, purpose, direction, but that also reflect values, preferences, and sense. For the experience of a digital artifact is as intertwined with its aesthetics as first-time lovers in a post-coital nap. They share an intimacy, a connection, something not reducible to container-contained logics. This is where we must begin. Destroy the separation. Disfigure the media message separation. They are lovers, but of the same body. They share each other's scent. To even refer to them as a they is to begin from a problematic position. And so the critic who dissects them, who parses them and exposes their separateness, misses what is beautiful and fundamental in their embrace. They are not after knowledge, but after expression, after representation, after making, contributing, gifting an excess and of an excess, showing the world something new, offering an experience. 
but not just the age-old, print-old experience of immediacy. H1 is not simply a marker of containment, it does not define the content, it triggers a pre-established aesthetic choice which orchestrates a type of experience. Thus, offering a mediated experience is no longer about Lanham's game of at versus through, but about the integration of multiple media to offer multiple layers of an authentic mediated experience. This is our rhetorical moment. This is what the digital is doing. Foregrounding mediated experiences, bringing making to the masses. Bringing sophisticated making to the masses. And so the language of new media is not simply the language of ones and zeros with accompanying automation, but rather the algorithmization of mechanical reproduction, as well as the techniques of the master class. The novice now remakes the masters, their technologies and their techniques, with two clicks of a mouse. This introduces an art, aesthetic, and techne crisis, making techniques ubiquitous and rendering aesthetics at the speed of light. The former become common, mundane, available to the masses, masses of a pseudo-master class. The latter function like the blink. Long gone is the gaze of the master class, now replaced by the glance of the novice, by the flick, click, tick, touch of the techno-ontic human. In this world, in this moment, the critic no longer serves in form or function. As the novice come master, maker now makes and critiques with the master techniques of both the master class and of mechanical reproduction. And each gifted artifact has its own moment of intervention, its own potential to generate a rhetorical ecology. Whether as a flawed expression or grounds for meme, whether as inductive or deductive victim or conductive relay, we make not because we want to and not because our screen media want us to. We make to gather together and allow forth mediated being. And here the gathering is not that of two separate worlds, for even Gibson's cyberspace has averted. The digital has spilled forth into the real if it was ever separate in the first place, and the digital futurists have capitalized on this, using the new aesthetic to call attention to a kind of McLuhan-esque numbness to the pixel, to the point of digital incision. New aestheticism is everywhere, and we continue to recognize it and react to what it communicates to us. Digital making bears witness to the mediated being. But being too has averted, oozed into our media. Thus, when we encounter screen media artifacts, we have to resist the literate impulse of criticism and instead attune ourselves to the mediation, to the mediating act, to our onto-mediated conditionalities, and to the expressions wanting in those mediated eruptions. It's a kind of poetic listening, a kind of inventive imperative that asks us to move on from the primacy of what does this mean, to a contributory, what does this allow me to make, to say, to express, to experience, to convey about my inworlded sense of mediated being. The issue then seems less a matter of questioning and more germane to the recognition of the engagement of the emerging pseudo-master class engaging technologies of all types and becoming through an act of play, through a trial and trail of aesthetic choices, through both a gaze and a glance of rhetorical significance. It is not the gazing separation of a trained class, but the attunement to recognition of a digital glance. And in that glance, in that moment of recognition, that moment of making, we participate in the socio-political cultural mediascape, a sea of millions of frivolous gestures that form the fibers of a digital culture, that run on the fiber optics of a technological age, grounding a responsivity of an emerging class of hacker bricker lures who learn to write on their own accord, and who do so with what is at hand. Get up.